In this video we're going to look at how you can classify PDEs or partial differential equations into elliptic, hyperbolic and parabolic. And these have associated properties with them that tell you quite a lot about the PDE. So it's important to know what PDE you're dealing with. Okay, so fundamentally we have a general equation that we can use here. We've got something a of x, y times um, the second derivative of our function, partial with respect to x squared, uh, plus some function b, um, which is the coefficient associated with the mixed derivative, and then we've got the function c, well it can either be a function or a constant, um, partial with respect to y. And this is equal to something we'll call f of x, y, phi, and so on, so, or other stuff. Okay, so if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, so if using these a, b, and c here, if that's greater than 0, we have something that is hyperbolic. And associated with this, we'll have two real characteristics. And just for short, we'll just call these R seeds. Um, so I don't have to keep writing this out. Um, if we've got b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then that means we've got a parabolic PDE. And that's got one real characteristic. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, so we're getting a negative number here, that's going to be elliptic, which means we have no real characteristics. Okay, so we take this general form, we extract a, b, and c, put it into b squared minus 4ac, which you should recognize from the quadratic equation, and we decide which of these three categories it um, belongs in by determining if it equals zero or the sign that this takes when you evaluate it. Okay, to make this concept a little bit more clear, let's have a look at an example, or rather two examples. Put a clean bit of paper here, might need this again. Okay, so let's just look at some examples. Um, we'll look at two examples, one extremely simple and one a little bit more complicated. So let's take Laplace's equation. Very famous PDE, probably the most famous PDE. Essentially it's just the, um, the Nabla operator um, of phi, del squared phi equals zero. Um, we can rewrite this uh, in this way. You should know the um, meaning of del and then this makes this alternative form extremely obvious. Equal to zero. So let's look back at here. So we compare it to our general equation here. We can see well we've got x squared so that's one in there. Uh, we've got no mixed derivative so there's no b and c is associated with this. So we've got one here, so a is 1 and c is 1. Just write that more explicitly. So a equals 1, b equals 0, and c is 1. Okay, so obviously we've got that b squared minus 4 times a times c. That equals minus 4. Minus 4 is obviously less than 0. So it means that Laplace's equation is elliptic and it has no real roots. That's the important consequence of it being elliptic. Or, sorry, not roots, um, no real characteristics. Doing advanced maths, not simple roots. Okay, more complicated example now. So imagine we had something like, oh, very similar actually. Um, we've got 1 minus x here. So this is a Similar to Laplace's equation, but we've got something else going on here with this 1 minus x. So the roots, again, compare this to what we've got here. a is going to be 1, 
and c is going to be 1 minus x. So we've got a equals 1, b equals 0, c equals 1 minus x. Now the interesting thing is the um, b squared minus 4ac that we've got, when we substitute this in, um, the classification of this PDA is going to be dependent on the value of x. So we've got 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 minus x. So that is, of course, minus 4 times 1 minus x. So if, um, if x equals 1, it's going to be parabolic. If x is less than 1, or if that's less than 1, this is going to make this elliptic because this is always going to be negative. 1 minus anything less than minus 1 is anything less than 1, sorry, is going to make this whole thing negative. So that's going to give us an elliptic. And finally, if x is greater than 1, then we're going to have something that is um, hyperbolic. Because if this is, say, 2, 1 minus 2, well, that's going to make that negative. And if this is negative, that's going to become positive. So we're going to have an elliptic. So in this case, this PDE is all three, potentially, depending on the value of x. So there you go. That's how you classify PDEs into the parabolic, elliptic, and hyperbolic. Hopefully this is helpful to you, and it's quite simple, really. And thank you for watching.